Well, I spoke a little while earlier to noted historian and author Ram Guha on his take and do listen in. It's rather interesting. Professor Guha, controversy has broken out regarding the appointment of Professor Rao as head of the ICHR with historians like Romela Thapar expressing concerns, indicating that they believe the BJP is appointing those sympathetic to its view uh, in key bodies like the ICHR. Do you share those apprehensions? Uh, yes, I do, but with this important qualification. Uh, the politicization of history by the state was, begin by, was begun by left-wing or Marxist historians in the 1970s when Nurul Hassan was education minister and continued by Arjun Singh and his acolytes and cronies among the left-wing intellectuals in the 1990s. So the Hindutva historians, so to say, and their patrons in the government are completely emulating the Marxists. The Marxists prepared the way. And uh, the best Indian historians are neither Marxists nor Hindutvavadis. Uh, and of course, there's a difference between Marxists and Hindutva in that Marxism is is a form of intellectual inquiry, a limited form, a narrow-minded form, but still a form of intellectual inquiry. Hindutva is mere myth and dogma. So th with that distinction in place, I would still like to say, uh, you know, this is uh, ulta chor kotwal kordante, as the Hindi expression goes, because it's the leftists and the Marxists who began the politicization of the ICHR as far back as the 1970s, and Professor Thapar knows this. But uh, Ram Guha, at some point, that politicization has to stop. So, you know, for instance, do we want to see a repeat uh, of that controversy over what was happening to school textbooks when Murli Manohar Joshi was HRD minister earlier? No, we don't. But I think, Didi, there's, there's an important distinction to be made. The ICHR funds academic research and the state should not get involved in directing the, the, uh, the funding of academic research. It should be an autonomous body of professional historians. The Minister of HRD should not appoint the head of the ICHR. On the other hand, uh, and actually, the ICHR is, with due respect, a second-rate or possibly a third-rate organization. No good historian takes it seriously. Even when the Marxists controlled it, the best historians were outside the ICHR. I have never been funded by the ICHR. Professor Nenjot Lahiri, Professor A.R. Venkatesh Chalapati, Professor Upinder Singh, some of our finest historians today, none of them have been funded by the ICHR. So, the state cannot fund good professional research. That will be done outside the state. However, the state has to play a role in designing curriculum for school children. This is where the dangers of ideology come in, where state governments promote, you know, uh, uh, regional heroes and make ab absurd, uh, you know, uh, glorification of uh, regional heroes, where they uh, distort textbooks to promote their political ideology. So in the realm of textbooks, there is a question of politicization because, as it happens, most schools in India are funded by the government. But at the level of professional academic research, which is what the ICHR is to, supposed to oversee, the ICHR has really very little credibility. Well, you make a very important point on, on government uh, making these appointments. That's, that's a very important point you're making. So essentially what you're saying is that left-leaning historians are hypocrites in this entire debate. Absolutely. And without question, you know, it, I, I'll give you a concrete example, because I've been in this business for a very long time. In the 1990s, Arjun Singh uh, announced in Parliament that a group of eight historians would write the history of the first 50 years of independent India, which was due in 1997. Now, I was one of the historians named uh, in that. I immediately said my permission has not been taken. I will not do it. But the Marxists persisted, and some of them called me uh, you know, including some of those who are criticizing the ICHR appointment today, said, you know, we have to do this, and uh, you must have state-sponsored history, and it will be the correct secular scientific history. So, as one of my historian friends said, historians, professional historians, should not take political patronage, they should be away from the state, and the Marxists are certainly guilty of double standards, because when it suited them, when they had Arjun Singh to patronize them, they went along and to government funds to promote their version of history in textbooks, in you know, other kinds of propaganda documents. Murli Manohar Joshi was an Arjun Singh with a saffron tinge. And that's what's happening now. Smriti Irani is continuing where Murli Joshi is left off. And on the other side, Arjun Singh promoted Marxist because his predecessor, Nurul Hassan, had promoted Marxist. And the best historians, the most interesting historians, are neither Marxists nor Hindutvavadis. And I think this is an important uh, fact that needs to be communicated to your viewers. 
the most interesting, supple, sophisticated history writing in India today by historians, by Indians, does not emerge from either of these two opposed ideological camps. It is not Marxist in inspiration and it is certainly not Hindutva in inspiration. All right, Ram Guha, thanks very much for joining us. Ram Guha speaking to me a little earlier today where we have a terrific panel to talk about this important issue tonight. Professor S. Irfan Habib, author and historian here in the studio with us. Professor Rakesh Sinha, well-known RSS ideologue. Also with us tonight, Professor Yogendra Yadav joins us. Abhishek Singhvi from the Congress Party and Sudhanshu Trivedi, spokesperson of the BJP. Uh, Professor Habib, let me ask you first. You heard Ram Guha's scathing words for, for Marxist historians. He's accused Marxist historians of having double standards and politicized beginning the politicization of history themselves, in a sense. No, I, I to some extent, agree with him, but, uh, but I, don't, I don't agree that ICHR is a body which actually funds uh, second-rate uh, historiography or history writing. ICHR has funded uh, some very well-known historians, some of them Marxists, some of them not so Marxists. You know, Mushiru Lassan is not a Marxist, though we actually club all these, uh, even liberal historians are Marxists today. Anybody who is critical of of communal history or any sectarian history actually is called a Marxist. It's an, it's an abuse which you use uh, for all such people, unfortunately. Ken Panikar is one of them, Sumit Sarkar is one of them. So there are a large number of people who have been funded. So here Ram Goa is not really completely right. So ICHR is not the body which is actually funding only but secondary. But on the issue of double standards and, the double standards, and hypocrisy. You see, I, I, I agree on, to some extent on that. The, I don't think there is any objective history which exists because history cannot be objective at all because there are some biases which come in uh, when a scholar from any vantage point he or she actually starts uh, uh, getting into the past. Uh, that uh, some reflection of his or her object, uh, subjectivity comes in, ideological subjectivity, subjectivity or, or uh, uh, individual, uh, you know. So, point is when you come to ICA, ICHR chairpersonship which Romila has also raised is a question of a scholarship like so many Marxist historians, including Professor Irfan Abhi, uh, the senior. And I heard him say not once, a couple of times, that R.C. Majumdar, though he, Irfan Abhi himself as a Marxist historian, disagrees with his historiography, but he will never question his scholarship. He was a scholar. And there are quite a few people like this who are scholars in their own right. You may disagree with them. Here, the issue is that the person chosen is not really a scholar of some caliber. And scholarship so is not my the credentials, much credentials, the way, and that's the not, way Romila th that's has not done. I'm, 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 this is not that I'm saying it's my personal thing. Anybody's scholarship is, is proven in public space. You write, you publish, and your community of professionals judge you on that. So something like this should exist so that I can make my opinion about your work. I'll, I'll take this to Abhishek Singhvi though, that Abhishek Singhvi, uh, Ram Guha, as I was asking, uh, Professor Habib was very scathing in his criticism of your government as well and of your party. Uh, and that whether it's been the Congress government, whether it's been a BJP government, everybody has politicized education and everybody has politicized history. Uh, so can anybody really stand up here and say that, you know, they have the moral high ground on this? Well, Lady, let me surprise you by saying that I don't... Uh entirely disagree with Ram Guha. He's a very eminent historian and a very objective person, but I, more, I, I agree with large parts of what he has said. And let me also add that there have been periods in the past when uh, governments which are non-BJP governments also may have appointed people with a particular ideology. But I have a different point to make altogether, Nidhi. First of all, if this has happened, should this continue indefinitely? So I keep pointing fingers at you and you keep pointing fingers at me. Point number two, there have been, even the two examples Ram Gua gave were in the distant past. Even the more recent of the two was in the distant past. You are not able to point out similar examples in other Congress governments in the more recent past. That's a very important point number two. Point number three, I think therefore Nidhi, the time has come to try to eschew this because at the end of the day, look, I think to suggest that a person doesn't have a philosophy no historian worth his name will be like a rudderless ship. So his philosophy is bound to be there. But my point is that I should not be appointing him because he has a pronounced bias of a philosophy. I should be appointing him because of his scholarship. Along with that may come a certain philosophy of life which is more left, right or center. Because you cannot find a man who is a rudderless ship without a philosophy. Having said that, I think also the time has come 
that we stop lecturing and having seminars and talks like this and create an institutional mechanism which creates a Chinese wall or insulates because you can take it that even if I will not do it, you will not do it, a third minister will come and he will do it at some point of time, whether it is party A or party B. So we have to create some insulating mechanisms. Let us have tests, four or five simple tests, outstanding eminence in your field, peer recognition, publications and although you have a philosophy which is left, center or right, it is not a pronounced bias injected into your writings. With these four or five guide, uh, guide posts and poll stars, we have to fashion a new approach because history is too serious in books to be today become a, a kind of a plaything. And I find certainly in the more recent example you are talking of this government, some names I have heard from the general peer uh, recognition I have heard are absolutely wanting in, 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 in scholarship or, or, no, or I think or you make a very important uh, point on the need to insulate then uh, you, you know these institutions and these positions and posts yes. from governments that keep changing. But I want to ask uh, Yogendra Yadav whether he agrees with the primary objection that Ramila Thapa raised and Professor Hab uh, Irfan Habib raised on, on Professor Rao's uh, uh, qualification as such and his credentials because Ramila Thapa writes in her essay uh, that uh, his work is unfamiliar to most historians and he's published popular articles on Indian epics but not in any peer-reviewed journal which is now a primary requisite uh, for academics to be taken seriously you know, at that level. Do you think that uh, is primarily a problem that you would agree with? Uh, Nidhi, I'm not a historian and history writing in India is a highly developed discipline. Uh, so I may not be the best judge but yes, certainly it's not hard to endorse the basic fact that irrespective of ideological leanings, whether you are left or you are anti-left, I don't think uh, Professor Rao would be regarded as a well-known historian. And that really is the point. The point is not so much ideological leaning, uh, because governments all over the world appoint people who are somewhat closer to their ideology. If Congress can do so, why not BJP? The real point is that these appointments have to be made within certain professional standards that are given within the four walls of the constitutional values, uh, these things have to be done. BJP's problem, unlike the Congress, is this. Congress also makes appointments of people closer to it. Congress has also misused it terribly. And uh, as Arun Shori's book showed once, when the Marxist historians had their sway over these things, they also misused uh, these positions considerably. But having done all these mistakes, all these misdemeanors, the Congress and the Marxist camp does manage to find people who have scholarly credentials. BJP's tragedy, as it were, is that they cannot find one person with serious academic credentials to fill the job, someone of their orientation. And that is what you see in Professor Rao. I had a quick look at his CV. My own sense is I could be wrong, but he, it would be very hard for him to try and compete for a professor's job in Delhi University. Now, if that person comes to head and institutions like the ICHR, uh, no matter, I mean, it is, it is clearly not the most preeminent institution in the world. Uh, yes, best Indian historians these days do not turn to ICHR, but it's a signal and it's a very poor professional signal. It's a signal of uh, our ability not to pick people of a high caliber. Uh, that to me is the real problem with this appointment, not so much the ideological saffronization as of now. I'll take that to Sudhanshu Trivedi of the BJP. Uh, Sudhanshu Ji, how would you respond to that criticism, uh, particularly about Professor Rao's uh, credentials for this important position? Actually what happened, you are talking about just uh, before the two panelists which have said, that how the objective history has got annihilated and the politicization, is, politicization started. In my opinion, politicization not started by the Marxist historian. It started from the time of Macaulay, which tried to demolish each and every basic fundamental of Indian history and Indian basic thinking. I would like to quote B.S. Naipaul, who has got a Nobel Prize. He had said that India is the only peculiar country in the world in which that history is taught, which doesn't enhance nationalism rather than it demolishes nationalism. It is the only country in the world in which the history written by their own people is denounced and the history written by the outsider people who were your basically your enemies has been accepted, which is not at all in Britain, France, Germany, wherever you go. And I would like to quote just one example. 
I am a student of engineering. There is a Pythagoras theorem which everybody understands. There is a written document evidence that the Bodhayan has established this 1400 years before Pythagoras. But it is not taught in Indian history because if you tell this is a Bodhayan Prame, then oh, this is the saffronization of the education. Like the quadratic equation has been proven that 800 years before Siddharachar has already, it is written in the books, in the Bhaskarachar's Leelavati. But nobody says, oh, this is the saffronization of the education. So in my opinion, we should try to get out of colonial mindset, which we are gradually coming out. Congress was not having any ideological agenda. So they had to outsource their entire ministry from Nurul Hassan to uh, um, Arjun Singh to Marxist. So they have done the biggest damage to Indian history. No, but so is, you, but Sudhanshu Trivedi, is it the job of historians to be promoting nationalism? I've been a student of history at the honours level in college. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, history is what it is. There are different interpretations, certainly. But is the objective to, um, you know, promote patriotism and nationalism? Is that really course, the objective? Th uh, history should be objective. Not at all. But this type of history which is written that Rana Pratap was a fanatic patriot. Shivaji has looted Surat. And Chan Shankar Ajad and Bhagat Singh were the terrorist. Is this type of history should be allowed? And particularly when you are having no proof at all. There no. are certain examples in the last I time when R.H. Sharma has written NCRT books for uh, citing that in the Vedic age, the uh, drinking of the wine and the gomas, the cow's meat was a very unique fashion. And I remember a debate in ZTV in 1995. He was unable to quote a book, forget about the chapter and the page. So at least this type of history which systematically devised to demolish the nationalism should not be allowed at all. Okay, but Professor Irfan Habib has a quick rejoinder to what you said and I will come to Professor Sina. Yes. I think whatever uh, whatever uh, objections uh, have been raised by Mr. Trivedi, I think they are not, uh, they are not, uh, this is not, uh, this is not how history is written. This is not uh, the way, and these are not the objections which are really uh, academic ob objections. These are very political objections. And what R.A. Sharma has written, that can be countered through, through academics, through scholarship. You can't have a political debate on that. You can't have sloganering around this. Unfortunately, we are looking, we are trying to see our present in the past. That is a problem. And you, is, therefore, it's become politicized. Yeah, so we, we just don't want but to see the past as, as it exists. Professor I'll, I'll bring you in here because uh, one of the problems, again, that Romila Thapar and others have cited is the fact that Professor Rao uh, is working on a project to fix the date of the Mahabharat war. And he basically says that he believes that the Mahabharat and the Ramayana are historical accounts. And left-leaning or Marxist historians or whatever you want to call them strongly disagree with that. Do you think that's the problem that they have, the main problem that they have? My question to Romila Thapar is, someone who is authority on Quran, someone who is authority on Old Testament and Bible, he's a scholar. But someone who is authority on Ramayana and Mahabharat, he is not a scholar. This is the problem of the Marxists. They believed in the academics of ex ex exclusion. They excluded the entire school of thought. I am just giving one example. Vimla Prasad is not a Marxist. He is ex-ambassador of Nepal. He wrote a very good book on partition of India. That book was published by Tinmurti Library. And that book was not taken cognizance by Marxists. They suppressed the book because that partition of India, the, the theory and the facts he, he used in the book is not suitable to the Marxist historians. And you, you rightly said, history, what it, it should be, what it is, what it is. You quote, uh, it is your version, that is very true. I am giving one example. In 1942 moment, Indian communists sabotaged the 42 moment, 42 moment that, that was the Quit India movement. They sabotaged. But you just see the modern Indian history. Indian communists have been eulogized. They, it, it, they, they, ha, they have been protected. No, they have, not, they have not sabotaged. Various theories have been propounded. What kind of history you are teaching to the, your students? There is a dialogue between Gandhi and P.C. Joshi on the role of the communists. Communist buildings where communist headquarters were attacked by the nationalists due to that. But the, the, there is nothing in the history. I am giving another example. Tripuri Congress. Everybody knows that in Tripuri Congress, Swash Chandra Bose has resigned. What was the region? What was the discourse? History, history lacks. You have to go archive for that research. Yeah, I can do research, he can do research, but, but the common students must know. My problem is that this, this Congress, the Congress party is a bankrupt party. It depends on the, uh, on the uh, communalist and the Marxist for their ideological 
outsourcing. I'm giving one example. No, but ma, 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 say, look, look, history, just, I, I, historical I, I, accounts will also depend I, upon you know rational evidence. It finish. will not be. I, 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 will, I, will, I will take one of Singhvi was uh, yeah. responding, uh, responding that uh, history should be uh, so free from the uh, from the political uh, pol political agenda. Uh, let, let him respond. In Kerala, Education Minister is Abdur. What the, what he is doing? Entire in I am not quoting RSS outfits. I am quoting the Students Federation of India, a Marxist outfit, which in, uh, just now in in a conference has condemned the uh, condemned the completely communalizing the, uh, the all the department education departments. Now the question is the Congress. Co it is a Congress party. Indian Union Muslim League is the partner of the Congress. What are Mr. Manu Singhvi and his party is doing in Kerala? So you, uh, to, to, there are two objections. Marxists have used the selective facts from the archive, and the selective. Uh, uh, another example. I'm no, just. No, no, no. I, I have to get. I'll come back to you because Professor uh, Irfan Habib had a quick point see, to I, make, and I'll come to Abhishek Singhvi and Yogendra. See, yes. I agree with you. I agree with you on Kerala because Kerala, lots of lots of very very problem problematic things are happening, and Congress actually is 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 in league with that because it's their it's their government. Surely I agree with that. One should take note of it. But when you talk about history, you know, historians are not really supposed to write for the Congress party or for the BJP or for anybody That's else. The issue. It's a scholarship. You know? yeah. And I, I don't know why people drag historians. I have been, I have done so many books. I have been writing all day. I am not part of any, any political party. I have not been patronized by any political party. So I question this, this whole debate when people actually drag history into, into, into politics. There are they are not actually scholars who are doing it. It's only political activists who are trying to use the past for their own advantage. Just no, no, no. Just no. That is one point. One yeah, point. Because then one point. One point. Yeah. Uh, communists have eulogized the Merit conspiracy case. May Mr. Habib can throw light on of that. Of course. And the, in the Merit conspiracy case, the CPM, nine members of the CPM in a press conference declared Sri Padamri Dangi was the British agent. Why not history book uh, take cognizance of that? It is not the discourse from the uh, Hedgevar Bhavna of RSS. It is discourse from within the communist party. CPM leaders denounced the archival facts. These are the archival facts. I, they the used it that Dange was a British agent. Now, how can you dispute, cannot dispute the, 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 this, this whole issue? Another thing, the Indian, reali Indian realities are taking cognizance. As Sudhan Sutrivedi was rightly pointed out, uh, pointed out, that when you are taking cognizance of the Indian reality, then it is saffronization. 